All right, so welcome everybody to this year's last autonomy talk. Today is a pleasure to have uh, Abol Fazl Lavoy. I hope <laughs> I pronounced it correctly. Uh, Abol Fazl is a postdoctoral associate in the Institute for Dynamic Systems and Control in our group at ETH Zurich. And uh, prior to joining our group, he was a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Computer Science at Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich and previously received a PhD in electrical engineering from the Technical University of Munich in 2019. Uh, he also previously worked in the Munich Aerospace Research Group and the German Aerospace Center, so the DLR. Uh, his research lies at the intersection of control theory, optimization, machine learning, and data science. And his research at the topic at ETH Zurich will be trustworthy safety critical AI for autonomous vehicles. Today is going to talk about the compositional techniques for automated verification and control of large scale so, uh, stochastic cyber physical systems. And we are all very looking forward to following the presentation. So go ahead, the stage is yours. Yep, okay, uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my tech. Today, I'm gonna to present my PhD work that uh, has been done at Technical University of Munich with the title of Automated Verification and Control of Large-Scale Stochastic Cyber-Physical Systems via Compositional Techniques. Okay, first I give you some introduction. Actually, my PhD work is motivated by the challenges arising in the control and analysis of large-scale stochastic cyber-physical systems. In the past few years, Stochastic cyber physical systems have received significant attention due to their broad applications in many real life engineering systems, including traffic networks, transportation systems, vehicle patternings, and so on. In fact, cyber physical systems play a significant role in many safety critical applications. They can properly model the discrete and continuous dynamics which tightly interact with each other in a feedback loop. Actually, the discrete part models the computation and communication, and the continuous part is corresponding to the physical dynamics. And they are becoming more and more autonomous, but the main bottleneck behind cyber physical systems is that they are mostly constructed by heuristic approaches. And this issue can result in catastrophic events. For instance, at 2018 in Arizona, a self-driving car had a deadly crash with a bicycle and unfortunately one lady died at that event. And based on a, research, a recent research uh, on 2016, in order to provide a 95% confidence of safety, we need 440 million kilometers of driving just for testing and collecting data. And this issue takes almost 13 years with 100 test vehicles continuously driving on different roads. So as you can see here, the heuristic approaches are costly, time consuming, and they cannot still ensure the safety of the system. But as a promising alternative, formal methods uh, have been introduced in the past two decades as a strong tool for formal verification and controller synthesis of cyber physical systems. So the question of interest here is that, how to formally synthesize controllers for large scale stochastic cyber physical systems enforcing high level logic properties. And the main focus of my PhD work actually was on stochastic systems because we know most of cyber physical systems are operating in noisy environments. So we have some environmental disturbances, model uncertainties, and in some uh, most scenarios actually the model is partially or fully unknown. So to address uh, this question, we face uh, some major problems. Uh, the first of which is the model is very complex with large scale dimensions. And also we have a stochasticity inside the model. And apart from the model, which is complex, the property of interest is also complex. So it is not any more stability or tracking. This is more complex property expressed by LTL formula like safety, reachability, or reach and avoid for uh, modeling the motion planning task, or even more complex properties, for instance, sequential reachability, or infinitely often visit between uh, two different uh, points. So uh, using classical control theory, we don't have any idea how we can deal with such complex specifications over these complex dynamics. 
For instance, in autonomous driving task, the property of interest is more complex with respect to traffic rules. But the good news here is that we are able to formally represent the traffic rules via LTL formula. For instance, uh, as a traffic rule, we need the no collision and we can model this no collision via this uh, logic operator, uh, S square. S square here means always, and always the distance between my car with other obstacles should be greater than or equal to a safe set distance. And also always the distance between my car and the location of other cars should be again greater than or equal to a safe set distance. So as you can see here, this is very similar to the human language and this is the power of LTL formula. So you can write your property as you wish and uh, you can actually uh, formally represent that property using LTL formula. And as goals, for instance, eventually uh, visit the checkpoints and every time checkpoint is visited, eventually come back to the start like a shuttle taxi. And uh, here, uh, if, the, uh, if the system on the line system here is deterministic, so the main goal here is to design a controller to satisfy the specification. But because the dynamic here is a stochastic, so the main objective here is to maximize the probability of satisfaction. Okay, in this regard, if we look at the relevant literature, there have been some efforts to attack the underlying problems. But uh, unfortunately, most of the proposed results uh, in the relevant literature suffer from the curse of dimensionality. And curse of dimensionality here means the computational complexity exponentially grows as the dimension of the system increases. So the main focus of my PhD thesis was on uh, developing different scalable compositional techniques to address the underlying problem by mitigating this curse of dimensionality. And in the setting of my work, uh, we propose a two layer of approximation techniques. In the first layer, we first uh, leverage the model order reduction technique and we compositionally provide infinite abstractions of the original systems whose space is still continuous, but with the lower dimensions. And as the second layer of approximation, Again, compositionally, we provide finite abstractions constructed from the radius order model with finite state sets. Then we perform analysis and synthesis over the simpler model, which is here the abstract model. And finally, we transfer all the results back over the original complex systems while we provide the guaranteed error balance. So here, as you can see, uh, we are given a network actually with n capital number of subsystems. And var sigma here is the stochasticity inside the model. So uh, the main goal here is to synthesize this uh, control input uh, new such that some high level property of interest of defined over the output of the system is satisfied. So uh, to begin with, uh, we are not able to continue with such a system due to the complexities that I mentioned before. So as the first layer of approximation, we first compositionally provide infinite abstractions of the original systems whose the space is still continuous, but with the lower dimensions. And as the second layer of approximation, again, we compositionally provide the finite abstractions of the radius order model systems. And because the original system is a stochastic, so here the finite system is a finite mark of decision process. You can see the probability of jumping from each discrete state to others. And at this stage, since everything is finite, so we can leverage the available tools and algorithms in computer science literature. And we can compositionally uh, synthesize the discrete controller for this discrete system. And first we refine this discrete controller back over the radius order model system by an interface function, which is here a hybrid controller. And finally, we refine the whole product back over the original complex system, again, using a hybrid controller. And at this stage, we provide a formal guarantee that this closed loop system will satisfy the same property as this closed loop system with some guaranteed error bounds. And in this setting, actually, in order to provide a, a formal guarantee for the preservation of the correctness, at each layer of approximation, we formally establish a, a relation between each subsystem and its corresponding infinite or finite abstraction. And accordingly, we establish a formal relation between the interconnected systems. So uh, this is the big picture of my PhD work. In the following, uh, I will explain in great detail. 
Okay, the model that we mainly consider in my work is discrete time stochastic control system characterizing using this tuple in which X is the set of uh, state, U and W are external and internal input sets. Var sigma is a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables. F is the transition map. H1 and H2 are external and internal output sets. Uh, sorry, Y1 and Y2 are external and internal output sets, and H1 and H2 are external and internal output maps. And in the setting of my work, we use the terminology uh, internal for the inputs and outputs that are affecting each other in the interconnection topology. So internal output of a system affects the internal input of other subsystems in the neighboring. But we use the terminology external for the input and outputs that are not using for the sake of interconnection. So we define the property of interest over the external output of the system. And the main goal is to design this in external input such that that property of interest is satisfied. And the evolution of the system can be described using this difference equation. Okay, in the setting of my work, actually, we deeply studied different compositional techniques uh, based on small gain and dissipativity. And here I'm gonna formally define the interconnected systems in two different settings via this uh, definition. So consider N subsystem sigma I, the interconnection of sigma I is sigma denoted by this term subjected to one of the following interconnection constraints. So in a small gain setting, actually, the interconnection constraint is element wise. So each internal output of a subsystem is equal to the internal input of other subsystems. But in dissipativity settings, the vector of internal inputs is equal to a coupling matrix multiplied by a vector of internal outputs. And that's the way that uh, uh, we interconnect the subsystems to each other and we come up with interconnected systems in two different settings. And here as the first step, uh, we formally build a relation between each subsystem and its corresponding infinite or finite abstraction. So we have a formal definition for this type of relation. If you are interested in more details, I will uh, postpone it to offline after the time. And also accordingly, we establish a formal relation this time between the interconnected of original subsystems and interconnected of uh, abstractions. But the question of interest here is that how we can formally represent the relation between the interconnected systems based on the relation between subsystems. Because the interconnected systems actually is the given system and this is the system that is, is important for us. So uh, we were not able to continue with that system due to some complexity I explained. And here we are searching for some compositional techniques to establish a formal relation between two these interconnected systems based on the relation of subsystems. And this uh, theorem actually gives us the solution as the compositionality results of the work. So consider interconnected system sigma with some proper relations between a subsystem and its corresponding abstraction under some compositionality conditions and those compositionality conditions are different in the small gain and dissipativity settings. So under some compositionality conditions, one can establish a formal relation between the interconnected systems based on the relation of subsystems. And as soon as we establish the relation between interconnected systems, we propose a result and formally quantify the probabilistic closeness between the output trajectories of two systems for the two interconnected systems for the finite time horizon capital T with a precision epsilon. So we formally quantify this mu based on some k infinity functions and some parameters comes from the definition of the relation. And we can leverage this result and come up with another result which, which gives us the probability of satisfaction of logic specification here called phi over two interconnected systems. Actually, in my PhD work, uh, we studied different compositional techniques. Uh, actually, the, the first of which uh, was some type of small gain approach. And in some type of small gain approach, we showed that the compositionality condition requires uh, linear growth and the gains of subsystems. And the overall approximation error is based on the linear combination of error of subsystems. But the good news here is that checking the compositionality condition here is much easier than other approaches because here finally we deal with some metrics and the spectral radius of the metrics should be 
strictly less than one uh, as a compositionality condition. The second approach that uh, we discussed that was max type small gain approach. And we showed that this max type small gain approach is more general than the sum type because first of all, uh, the compositionality condition here doesn't require any linear growth. And also the overall approximation error here is based on the maximum error of subsystems instead of being the linear combination of them. And the last approach we studied that was dissipativity approach. And we showed that in dissipativity approach, the compositionality condition can enjoy the interconnection topology and for some specific interconnection topology, for instance, for SQ symmetric interconnection topology, this compositionality condition can be fulfilled uh, totally independent of number of subsystems. But the overall approximation error uh, is unfortunately additive similar to the sum type small gain. So uh, there is a trade-off uh, between different uh, compositional techniques. We need to see which parameters are more important for us and we need to stick to that uh, compositional technique based on our priorities. And here we applied the results of uh, infinite abstraction uh, on a motion planning task. So the specification is rich and avoid. And here, uh, this is an academic example. So the original network here, uh, Sorry, the original network here uh, consists of uh, three nonlinear subsystems. The dimension of each subsystem is seven, and the dimension of the whole network is 21. So, obviously, we cannot continue with this system to begin with due to the dimension of the system. So, we leverage the model order reduction technique and we reduce the dimension of each subsystem from seven to a scalar. So, we are dealing with the whole system as a dimension three. And we leverage a software tool uh, in the literature, uh, the tool called SCOTS, and we synthesize the controller for the abstract system. So this is the specification that we have. Uh, the orange boxes here are target points and the blue boxes are obstacles. So we designed the controller for the infinite abstraction. You can see here the closed loop output trajectories over the infinite abstraction. And now we refine the controller back via an interface map over the original complex system. And here the black trajectory is, is for uh, original network. And we formally provide the uh, guarantee that the closed loop, actually the uh, closeness between the output trajectories of two systems will not exceed 0.2 for a time horizon 10 with a probability at least 95%. So up to here, I uh, presented the first layer of approximation uh, that was infinite abstraction. But now I'm going to explain the second layer of approximation, how we can uh, construct our finite abstraction, which is here, the finite entities. So the idea here is putting the grid on the set of state and also on the set of external and internal inputs. So suppose here we have a two-dimensional state space. So we put a grid and we consider the center of uh, each cell as a representative point and we apply the discretized external and internal inputs to each center of the cell and we compute the probability jumping to all other cells. And actually we need to put this arrow to all other cells. I didn't put here because I didn't want to be crowded but we need to do this. And this delta here is the state discretization parameter. Of course, this delta should be chosen in a smart way because at the end of the day, we can see this delta appears in the final error. So we repeat the procedure for the whole center of the cells and for the whole combinations of the external and internal uh, inputs. And we store the probabilities in a matrix. We call this probability transition matrix. So after repeating the procedure and storing the whole probability, we are done with our finite MDPs. So we can represent our finite MDP using this tuple. And we can approximate the dynamic of our finite MDP using the map pi of x, such that the map pi of x should satisfy, satisfy this uh, condition. And here, uh, delta is a state discretization parameter, and n is a dimension of the state space. So we have some similar compositionality results, but uh, for the finite abstractions. So you can see if we are able to build a relation between a subsystem and its corresponding finite abstractions under some compositionality conditions, we can establish a relation between the interconnected of original subsystems and interconnected of finite abstractions. 
Okay, we apply the results of a finite abstraction to a room temperature network in a circular ring containing 1,000 rooms. And the main goal here is to synthesize the controller for the original system by its finite abstraction such that the controller keeps the temperature of each room in a safe set between 90 and 21. So we provide a formal guarantee that the difference between the output trajectories of two systems will not exceed 0.02 for a time horizon 10 with a probability at least 96%. And we leverage a tool in the literature, uh, actually the tool uh, called uh, FAST. And uh, you can see here the closed loop output trajectories for a representative room for 10 different noise realizations. And as you can see here, none of the trajectories violates the safety specifications, which is compatible with the theoretical guarantee here. And here you can see the safety probability in the range of safe sets. So the safety probability at the middle of safe set is maximum and at the boundaries are minimum, which is expected here. And here actually we have a comparison between our work with the one work in the literature. So the work is, the result is based on finite dynamic Bayesian network and the Actually, we selected this work for the comparison because this is the closest work to our setting. So we wanted to have a fair comparison here. So first we plot the probabilistic error based on a standard deviation of the noise and a state discretization parameter. And you can see the error proposed by our approach, dissipativity approach is totally independent from the sigma, but the error by DBN approach uh, converts to infinity as sigma goes to zero. And in another uh, figure, actually, we plot this time the probabilistic error based on the precision epsilon and a state discretization parameter. And this time, you can see the error by DBN is independent from epsilon, but our error is increasing by decreasing epsilon. So uh, there is a trade-off, actually, uh, between two different approaches based on selecting sigma and epsilon. But to have a fair comparison here, I need to emphasize that uh, in our approach, in order to provide the formal, in order to provide the formal relation actually between each subsystem and its corresponding infinite or finite abstraction, we require each subsystem to have some sort of stability property, incremental input to a state stability, delta S, S property. But DBN approach doesn't ask uh, such an assumption. So we can say DBN approach is more general than our approach. But actually we leverage the, this property of the system with the gain of providing the better closeness error. As you can see here in the green plane, in both figures, our error uh, outperforms the error by DBN. Okay, as another contribution of my PhD thesis, we generalized the dynamics from a stochastic control system to a stochastic switch plans. So here P of K is a switching signal. And the main goal here is to synthesize this switching signal such that again, some property of interest defined over the output of the system is satisfied. So uh, here dealing with uh, such a system is not easy because here uh, each subsystem actually uh, has some finite number of modes. And we need to take care of the dual time condition here, which gives us the permission to switch. And also uh, on the top of dual time condition here, we need to uh, provide the compositionality results. So uh, we have n capital number of subsystems and each subsystem actually can uh, switch between let's say m uh, finite number of modes. So deal dealing with this uh, type of systems is not straightforward. So uh, in order to reduce the complexity here, we propose an auxiliary system for each subsystem. We call the auxiliary system augmented system and this augmented system is a single system, but the, covering the whole modes of the subsystem. And we showed that the output trajectories of the augmented system and each subsystem are exactly equivalent. So we continued with the augmented system because that was more straightforward. And the, we compositionally provide the finite MDPs for the augmented system. And again, we compositionally synthesize discrete controller for this discrete system. And finally, we refine this discrete controllers back, which is here the switching signals back over the original complex uh, switch network, such that again, we provide the formal guarantee that this closed loop system will satisfy the same property as this closed loop system with some guaranteed error balance. 
and uh, we applied the, the results of uh, actually a stochastic switch system over a road traffic network in a circular cascade ring with the 1,000th number of cells. So each cell has an entry and a way out, and the entry is controlled by traffic light. So there are two modes for the traffic light, mode one and mode two. Mode one represents the traffic light is red, so no vehicle passes, and for mode two, the traffic light is green. And here the state of each subsystem uh, captures the density of the traffic. So the main goal here is to synthesize the controller for the original network by its point abstraction, such that the safety controller keeps the density of the traffic lower than 20 vehicles per cell. And we provide a guarantee that the difference between output trajectories of two systems will not exceed one for a time horizon 15 with a probability at least 93%. And you can see here the closed loop output trajectories uh, for a representative cell with 10 different noise realizations. And also here you can see the optimal switching pattern. So using this pattern, we can switch between mode one and two such that we can keep the density of the traffic lower than this number. And we have a comparison here over this example. This time uh, we compared the error by max small gain proposed by us and DBN approach. And we plot the probabilistic error based on the number of subsystems, capital N, and the state discretization parameter. And you can see the error by max small gain is totally independent of N, but the error by DBN is additive with respect to N. And here, similarly, actually, the error by uh, max small gain is independent uh, from a standard deviation of the noise, but here the error by DBN is independent from precision epsilon. And here we have a comparison between two approaches, both proposed by us, max small gain and dissipativity. And the probabilistic error uh, for max small gain is independent from a uh, number of subsystems, but the error by dissipativity is additive with respect to N. But an interesting issue here is that uh, you can see for a network with some low number of subsystems, let's say 10 number of subsystems, so although the error by dissipativity is additive, this error is even slightly better than max small gain, as you can see in this part. And this is also expected in our setting because uh, in our setting, in order to provide the compositionality results for max small gain, so from the beginning, we uh, started with some summation uh, type of some parameters and we needed to find an upper bound based on max type for the sum type. And the approach that we transferred this sum type to max type that was conservative, and you can see the result of conservatism here for some uh, low number of uh, subsystems. So the error by dissipativity is better. But at the end of the day, most of cyber physical systems uh, consist of a high number of subsystems. And based on error, this is always better to continue with max small gain rather than dissipativity. Okay, here we have another comparison, this time based on memory usage. So required memory for the construction of finite MDPs in both monolithic and compositional manners. You can see if we want to provide the closeness guarantee between two interconnected systems as 97%, we need to take the state discretization parameter as 0.01. And with this state discretization parameter, if we want to construct finite MDPs for each subsystem as the setting of this work, so we need 128 uh, gigabyte memory for each subsystem. But here you can see for constructing in a monolithic approach, so this amount of memory we need, which is uh, absolutely impossible in practice. Even you can see here, actually, in order to provide a, a very weak, actually, closeness between two interconnected systems, two persons, again, continuing with the monolithic approach is not possible. And here in this example, all the subsystems are homogeneous for the sake of simple presentation. So we construct uh, this finite MDP one time with this amount of memory, and uh, this uh, finite MDP actually works for other subsystems. But even if we assume the network uh, actually has some uh, heterogeneous subsystems, so even in this case, we need the 1,000 times of this amount of memory, which complexity is linear, you can see. But here, the complexity obviously is exponential. OK, but what if the model is partially unknown? So suppose in the topple of the system, the transition map F and the 
distribution of a stochasticity are unknown. And the only information that we have is the Lipschitz constant of the system. So uh, actually the, no the normal way actually here, actually here the main goal is to again design the controller uh, for this unknown system such that uh, some uh, high level property of interest, we call this co-safe LTL are satisfied over the output of the system. So the normal way in such a situation is to construct finite MDP and continue with the approaches that I explained before. But this is not possible because as I explained in the uh, construction procedure for finite MDP, we needed to know the precise model in order to construct the finite MDP, which is not the case here. So here instead we propose a model for informed learning technique in which we work on a quantized measurement of the original system, but without knowing the probability transitions. And we provide the optimality guarantee of the synthesized controller trained by reinforcement learning, but over the unknown continuous space stochastic system. So suppose sigma is a continuous space system with unknown map F and distribution of R sigma. So a convergent model for reinforcement learning algorithms over the, over the sigma hat R, which sigma hat R is the a finite representation of the system, but without knowing the probability transitions. With the reward function converges to a two eta optimal strategy over the original unknown system. And we formally quantify this eta based on the state discretization parameter, the finite time horizon and the Lipschitz constant of the system. And in order to provide this result, we already leverage the classical convergence result of reinforcement learning, which is telling us if the episode of the reinforcement learning goes to infinity, the learned policy converges to the optimal one. And we applied the RL algorithms on room temperature and road traffic control. So you can see here, PR here is the learned policy. You can see for the different range of uh, a state discretization parameter and P star is the optimal one. So to compute this P star, we assume we already know the model because we wanted to verify the results. And to compute this P star, we use dynamic programming and solve one and a half player game. Uh, but we can show that the, this P star, the optimal policy, but over the unknown continuous space system always exists in an interval with this lower bound, this upper bound centered at this eta that we formally quantify this eta. And we have some similar results for the road traffic control. And we can show that if the episode of the reinforcement learning, the number of iteration goes to infinity, this learned policy converges to the optimal one. And also we applied the uh, reinforcement learning algorithms and a seven dimensional nonlinear model of BMW car. So as a specification, we have a two lane highway and in the same lane of traveling, one accident suddenly happens. So we are interested in an autonomous operation to avoid any crash. And here after about the 10K episode, we managed to uh, learn the policy and you can see the simulation from 100 different initial conditions. In all of them, we were successful satisfying the specification. Okay, as the last part of my thesis, we developed an open so source software tool uh, in C++ and OpenCL based on the theoretical results of the previous uh, sections. So uh, the tool called Amitis and Amitis actually provides uh, novel parallel algorithms for first constructing finite NDPs and then utilize this finite MDP for the second part in dynamic programming part to synthesize controllers enforcing some LTL properties, including safety, reachability, and reach and avoid. And this tool supports high performance computing platforms together with cloud computing services. And we significantly improve the performances with respect to computation time and memory usage by parallel execution on different computing platforms, including CPUs, GPUs, and hardware accelerators. And to benchmark our tool, actually we applied the tools on different machines. So you can see a, a very, uh, actually a standard machine. And this is a very advanced machine, Amazon Web Services with this configuration and this uh, number of processing elements. So we first uh, applied the tool on a robot model on different machines. And here we have two types of specification, safety and reach and avoid. 
And you can see the computation time, obviously uh, for an advanced machine, the computation time is significantly decreasing. And here we have uh, required memory. So you can see here required memory uh, is much less than the required memory in the normal one. So OFA here stands for on the fly abstraction. And this is the uh, actually abstraction that we propose inside the tool to give you the main idea behind this on the fly abstraction. In a normal situation, so we need first to construct our finite MDP and we store this finite MDP and we utilize this finite MDP in the second part for the dynamic programming part. But in order to provide the decent closeness between interconnected systems actually, and the finite abstraction. So we need to take a, a state discretization parameter very fine from the beginning. And by choosing this state discretization parameter very small, so the size of this matrix and MDP would be very huge. And in most real, real uh, life scenarios, so we are not uh, able to store uh, these metrics due to some serious memory limitations. But here in the on the fly abstraction that we propose, so we don't store the matrix MDP from the beginning. And in the second part, dynamic programming part, uh, whenever we, we use some, we need actually some entries of uh, that metric. So we recompute those entries on the fly and we continue uh, with the synthesis part. And using that, uh, that approach, we can uh, significantly release the memory as you can see here, but the computation time obviously is increasing because every time we need to recompute. But here it doesn't matter. The computation time here is not a big deal. The memory uh, actually is very important for us. And by the way, we are proposing some uh, parallel algorithms for decreasing this computation time. For instance, in Amazon Web Services, you can see the computation times are comparable. So there is, not, uh, there is no such a difference here. And uh, we compare our tool with a very recent tool in the literature, the tool called the uh, is tacky and we have an academic example here, uh, ranges from two to 12. And you can see here for the uh, 12 dimensional system, Stachy solved the problem almost six hours, but Amity solved the problem in the same platforms only in 29 seconds. But of course, by utilizing the GPU of the same platform. And also we applied the tool on a road traffic network. So you can see uh, on this machine with this configuration, this amount of second we need, but in Amazon Web Services, we solved the problem in only two seconds. But Stacky uh, didn't manage to even finish solving the problem after 24 hours. And for BMW example, in Amazon Web Services, we solved the problem actually in this amount of seconds. Okay, there are some other uh, contributions in my thesis. I, I didn't uh, put here due to uh, lack of time. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, actually for building a formal relation between a subsystem and its corresponding finite abstraction, we require a subsystem to have some sort of a stability property, delta ISS property. But what if some dynamics don't fulfill that property? So here we uh, propose a relaxed version of a small gain and dissipativity in which the stability or stabilizability of the individual subsystems is not uh, necessarily required. And also here we propose uh, another notion of probabilistic relations based on delta lifting. And the good news behind this notion actually delta lifting is that uh, we managed to combine the both infinite and abstract, uh, infinite and finite abstraction layers and come up with a unified compositional uh, condition, uh, which is some sort of LMI condition. And we showed that if some dynamics satisfy that LMI condition, so the closeness error comes from this unified approach is much better than the error comes from the individual infinite and finite abstractions. Okay, very recently, actually, I was working on compositional construction of control barrier certificates for a formal verification and synthesis of interconnected stochastic systems. So again, the property of interest expressed by LTL formula, but instead of uh, constructing finite MDPs, uh, I worked on actually uh, control barrier certificates. The good news behind those approaches is control barrier certificates actually are uh, discretization free approaches. So we can uh, significantly reduce the care of dimensionality problem. 
And here, uh, to give you some intuition, so uh, control barrier certificates actually are some live upon flight functions. We have some initial sets, some unsafe sets, and we put some conditions over barrier function corresponding to two different sets. And also we put a condition over the evolution of the system by a barrier function. And the, uh, we ensure that actually, if those conditions are satisfied, any trajectory starting from this initial set will not visit this unsafe set with some sort of probabilistic guarantees. So this is the uh, idea behind the control barrier functions that we work, but the issue here is that uh, actually we develop the compositional techniques for these control barrier functions available in the literature and also uh, our work that was stochastic. And also very recently, I was working on a similar problem, but uh, for a black box model. So uh, we suppose that we want to construct barrier functions against to ensure the safety of the system, but we, we don't know the model and we work uh, based on some collected data to uh, come up with the formal stability guarantee over the original system. So as the first step, we uh, reformulate the conditions of barriers as a robust convex optimization problem. But in one of the conditions of this RCP, the dynamic is appeared. So obviously we cannot solve this RCP using SOS optimization or other techniques. So instead of uh, solving this RCP, so we uh, work with some sample uh, from the trajectory of the system and we uh, presented the equivalent scenario convex program of this RCP in which actually we can resolve the problem of the uh, unknown dynamics because we are working with some uh, sample data. And actually we relate the objective function of this SCP to the objective function of RCP. And based on one theorem, yeah, we provide the safety guarantee over the unknown uh, original system of course, with some uh, a priori confidence bound, and this confidence bound are tailored to the number of uh, samples and also Lipschitz constant of the system that we assume this is given, or we can estimate this from the data and some other parameters. And also, uh, yeah, I was working on the similar uh, techniques, but the main goal that was the uh, stability verification of unknown systems and also design the stabilizable uh, uh, controller using data-driven approaches. Okay, we have some recommendations for the future work. So the main focus of my thesis was on developing different compositional techniques for the construction of abstractions, including infinite or finite. And we did the controller synthesis compositionally, but for a simple safety specification. But what if the property of interest is more complex, for instance, reachability or reach highway? So uh, compositional controller synthesis for this type of complex properties of, uh, are uh, of interest. And also uh, in my work, we mainly discussed, we mainly considered this safety specification as a hyper rectangular and projected each direction to some subsystems and continued with the compositional approach. But what if uh, actually we, we are dealing with more complex, uh, let's say for instance, sequential reachability. So how we can decompose this more complex LTL property over a subsystem such that we can again provide the compositionality results. And here, this is very interesting if one can get the mixed idea actually behind the max smogging and dissipativity approach and come up with max dissipativity approach in which the compositionality condition is still scale free for some specific interconnection, but the overall error is based on the maximum error of subsystems instead of being the linear combination of them. And the Swiss systems that we work here, we assume each subsystem is already stable or stabilizable. But what if Swiss systems with unstable or even unstabilizable subsystems? And the recent work uh, I explained so, uh, data-driven construction of barrier certificates. So we did the work actually for a single system. This is very interesting if uh, one can actually uh, extend the work for the, uh, develop the compositional techniques, but using the same idea, just uh, using this compositional approach, the uh, actually idea here is more scalable. And Amitis at the moment is developed for uh, 
discrete time stochastic systems. So one potential direction of extension is developing for continuous time systems and formally uh, quantify the error from continuous time to discrete time. And also Amity's at the moment is for uh, a stochastic control systems, but what if it's stochastic switch systems or hybrid systems? So those are the potential extensions uh, that we can continue. Okay, at the end, uh, I would like to acknowledge my PhD advisors and some colleagues at different uh, schools uh, due to some collaborative works that I explained uh, some of them here. And also I acknowledge uh, some uh, funding uh, agencies, ERC starting grants and Munich Aerospace for greatly supporting my uh, PhD and postdoc uh, period. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Abol Fazl. Uh, thank you for the talk. Thank you. My pleasure. Are there questions? Yeah, I'm a puzzle. Um, so my understanding is that um, you know a lot of this work is really based on kind of a pre-computation of a controller, right? That then is executed in real time. Um, now, in a lot of the applications, especially I'm thinking of autonomous robots, right? So when you have like a reach and avoid kind of problem, in most of the useful cases, the let's say the avoid part is something that is only instantiated at a runtime. Yeah. Right? I don't know in advance where all the obstacles will be, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, you know in advance where other vehicles will be. I don't know in advance where pedestrians will be. Right. Yeah, I agree. So how would you deal with that? So I, I can formulate the, the rule that is, you know, okay, so I want to avoid collision with an obstacle, right, with, the, with another vehicle, but I don't know where that vehicle is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, you're right, yeah, I, I totally agree with you on this issue. Uh, yeah, here, actually, in, in the work that I explained, we need to know the exact dynamics and also location of the obstacle. But, but assume, yeah, as you explained, uh, so in the real world scenarios, we are not aware of these uh, locations actually. So there are some works in the literature, if we know the dynamics, if we know the dynamics of these obstacles. So there are some works in the literature, based on that works, they actually solve the dynamic program in the similar, in the similar setting uh, for the randomized uh, avoid set, for the randomized, but but they already know the, dyna the, the dynamic of the avoid set. So in this case, yeah, again, uh, so uh, we are able to uh, come up with some results for randomized avoid set, but in real world scenarios, even we don't know the dynamic actually of the obstacles. So in this case, uh, I believe, yeah, we can, uh, actually we can uh, solve the conditional statements. But as conditional statements, I mean by conditional statement, we can uh, solve the problem as uh, this uh, actually uh, I, I explained, but we can say in the real world, when we deploy the controller and uh, use the controller in the lookup table for the in real time. So if there is some obstacles in this distance, so uh, we need to resynthesize the controller again, and we need to update the controller again. But this depends on the size of the problem and infrastructure. And in most of the scenarios, maybe this is not possible in real time. Yeah, I agree with you. But the, I don't know, in the cloud computing, because I, I haven't had any experience for the real world scenarios. In the cloud computing, maybe we can decrease uh, uh, compute, uh, actually the computation time and everything just for updating, not for uh, actually the designing from the beginning. No, for updating for that scenario. But the issue is, yeah, this is the bottleneck for sure. But the issue is uh, our approach in, is in general is the offline approach due to the computation. Right, 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 right. And you know, and I understand that uh, you know, understand the point, and you know, for a number of things that uh, you know, for example, when you have a let's say the specification of kind of like a stationary, right, or like a uniform, then yeah. Yeah. it makes a lot of sense, right? But um. Yeah, for the kind of, um, you know, like a real time applications where um, that, you know, I am personally more interested in, uh, what I found is that instead of thinking of abstractions, right? So where you kind of try to find a general controller, right? So that is something that will work for 
you know, and initial conditions, but for fixed obstacles, right? Yes, in exactly. tip, you know, in, 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 you know, when you do things in online, you know, typically what you, you don't care about any initial conditions because you know what your initial conditions are, right? Yeah. And, and now you, you have the instantiation of the obstacles. So you can kind of, so you know the initial condition, you know the location of the obstacles. You know, I'm not talking about uncertainty in perception and things like that, you know, let's assume that we know where the obstacles are, right? So then what I found that works better for this kind of thing is just do the completely the opposite. Instead of thinking of abstractions, what I tend to think of is concretization, right? Like, like the other way around. I, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, that, that, that part of my work or, you know, I, uh, but uh, you know, this is something that essentially now that you are starting, you know, with us, maybe that's something that we can look at. Okay. Yes. Um, sure. Yeah. It's kind of like like just flipping things inside out, um, right? So oh, yeah. I would be interested in in seeing what 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 you think about those you know, yeah, true. The, the different way of approaching other of these things. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, but I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So we need we, we solve the problem offline and the, because we provide the controller for any initial condition, we need to pay more cost and actually this is more expensive. So the lookup table would be more huge. Storing this lookup table uh, is a big deal. Well, right. You know, I wouldn't see it as a, as is a, is a more expensive, you know, you know things are you know, at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, probably, you know, these are both hard problems, right? But in a sense, um, really formulating the problem in, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, for, for the kind of application that we have in mind, or at least, you know, in my group, right, or, you know, the kind of thing that I tend to be more interested in, it may be convenient to formulate things in a, in a, in a different way, right? So essentially you're solving a different problem. Um, yeah. That is kind of like a, something is more targeted to, you know, what I'm doing now. So I know my initial condition. I know where the obstacles are. So there is really not that much of an advantage, or you know, it's harder to pre-compute everything, right? Because I don't know the exact instance, right? Yep, yep. So, but then how would you do things that is more amenable to more online kind of computation? But um, yeah, you know, we have time to think about that. Okay, yep, sure. Yeah, I don't know if other people have questions or. I'm sure that um, <clears throat> Joella will have questions in the future because uh, it's time to examples of uh, categories of systems. And uh, some of these property, I mean, we already know, know what classes of systems are compositional in the control theory sense, some of those could also be categories. So Joel, I think you should uh, kind of yes. learn the, the types of systems that uh, Abel Fals mentioned. Yes. And then kind of figure out uh, if that compositionality is actually like category, it, it, it is similar or the same as compositionality in, in the sense of a trace another category, for example. Yes. I actually was, uh, that's, that's a good point and that connects to the question I wanted to ask. Uh, in the first slides, you show, um, yep. you show this kind of order between the abstractions and the real system. Uh, and you said uh, that if, if you added more time, you would have talked about that. I'm curious about. Yeah, sure. Uh, they related. Was, you, uh, you mean the formal relation between subsystem? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I, I have some backup slides. So if, if you don't mind, I can share the backup slides and uh, sure, sure. So do you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah. 
Yeah, this is the relate. Yeah, you can see actually here is the uh, relation between each subsystem and its corresponding, let's say here, finite abstraction. And we have two uh, conditions for this type of relation. This relation is very similar uh, to the delta ISS uh, actually property. So we are saying uh, consider two systems, no matter uh, uh, actually the two systems, the one is infinite uh, abstraction with radius of the model, or this is finite abstraction. So this function V, we, we define this V as the relation over the Cartesian product of two systems. And we call this as a stochastic pseudo simulation function between two systems. If there exists these k-infinity functions and constants such that these two conditions are satisfied. And what is the uh, intuition behind this condition? So the first condition here actually is telling us this relation captures the mismatch between the output of two systems. So the output of the systems will, will be closed actually. And for the evolution of the system, one, uh, when time uh, elapsed, so uh, actually uh, we, will, uh, we will be closed again actually via this function uh, with the offset of this row internal and row external and this side. And this row internal actually captures the mismatch between the internal input of subsystems and this row external is corresponding to the external uh, input of the abstraction. So the in intuition is if we start close based on the first condition, we will remain close in one step transition. And this is very close actually to the definition of delta ISS property. And we have similar definition for this time for the original, uh, for, for the interconnected of original uh, subsystems and the interconnected of finite MDP. So the definition is uh, the first definition exactly the same as before, but in the second uh, uh, definition, uh, in the second actually condition, so first condition is same as before. The second condition here uh, is still, yeah, this is similar to the previous uh, condition, but we don't have any row internal here anymore because uh, once we interconnect the subsystems to each other, so the inter internal input would, would be disappeared actually. And uh, yeah, this is the type of relation that is uh, well established in the literature. And uh, this relation is based on some functions. We call this a stochastic simulation functions and defined it over the Cartesian product of two systems, which actually uh, relate the, the state trajectories of two systems to each other. And in the following, in the theorems that we have, so uh, yeah, we can say, Actually, based on this relation, these parameters that I was talking about, based on this relation, which is important only at the initial conditions, and these uh, k-infinity functions, and this parameter that comes from the other uh, part of the condition that I explained, so we can formally quantify this uh, mu. Actually, that was the uh, closeness between uh, the probabilistic closeness between the output trajectories of two systems. All right, and, and very interesting. Uh, so the, to understand the detail, I have to read better the papers, but so, so one last question, basically the previous two slides, then uh, the actual uh, composition of the systems preserves the order, right? Is, is that also what you're saying? Uh, preserve, you, mean, you mean the order of the each subsystem? Yes, sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah, so if you have uh, a lot of subsystems uh, and, and they have this, order property of the previous slide, do you compose them? The composition is... But in normal way, we start from other way around. So we are given a network, we decompose the network actually. Right, yeah, 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 of course, of course. It's the other way around, but... Okay, that's very interesting. I, 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 will, uh, I will catch up later, later sure, maybe in the new year with some deeper questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, then uh, thank you very much, Abol Fazl, for, for your talk. You're welcome. Uh, you are the, the guy that closes the autonomy talks this year. Uh, uh, um, thank you very much all for attending and uh, see you all uh, next year. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.